this is everything you need to know about Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. That's right, this is a crash course in Disney World's most expensive and flagship resort. There is a lot to see and do at this hotel and it costs a lot of money to stay here. So we're gonna talk a little bit about it to see if it's right for you and so that you can learn everything you need to know before you get here for your stay. Or if you're not staying, I wouldn't be staying, but I do come and visit here. You don't have to stay here to come. <laughs> You can come here even if you're staying at a cheaper hotel. Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa has received the AAA Four Diamond Award, the Mobile Four Star, and was voted one of the top 50 resorts in the whole world by readers of Conde Nast Traveler. The resort is 40 acres with 900 hotel rooms and is styled after a turn of the century Victorian resort. The styling is really, really beautiful. Again, even if you're not staying here, it's worth a visit. Just swing on over from Magic Kingdom. It's so close and just take in some of the sights. It is considered the flagship hotel of Disney World and it's got the prices to show it, but it is in the deluxe resort category. And deluxe resorts means you get access to the most Disney perks. So all Disney hotels get access to some perks like free transportation, parking at your hotel and the theme parks included, as well as early theme park entry 30 minutes prior to park open every single day. But at the deluxe hotels, you get a little extra, including the coveted extended evening hours, which on select nights is time in the park that you get to spend after it closes it's only available to deluxe guests. Now let's talk a little bit about those rooms. There are rooms in the outer buildings as well as in that huge main building. The different levels include those outer building rooms, main building rooms, as well as club level, king bed options, and one or two bedroom suites. There are also Disney Vacation Club options here. That's Disney's timeshare program. And there are some absolutely gorgeous Mary Poppins themed rooms. Of course, you do not have to be a DVC member to stay in a DVC room. It's just gonna be a little pricey unless you are using those DVC points. Pricing does of course vary based on date and room type. And you can also get things a little cheaper if you catch a special offer. On allyears.net, we cover every time a new hotel discount drops. So keep an eye over there for any updates. In 2023, the lowest category of rooms started at $760 per night and went up to over $1,500 per night. The regular hotel rooms at this resort. Yeah, so it's pretty expensive. Generally at deluxe hotels, you can expect rooms to have more amenities and be a little larger. And that is true here. Also, a lot of the rooms have been updated, so they are absolutely beautiful. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about this resort in general, you can check out my full review of Disney's Grand Floridian Resort that is up on the channel now. And coming soon, we have a full tour that will feature those updated rooms as well. So you can see both the unupdated and the updated rooms. Location, 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 plus transportation. You can see two of the main benefits of this hotel right here, actually three. So you've got the monorail. Those lights below the monorail are the walking path to Magic Kingdom. That's right, it's about a 15 minute walk and it is a beautiful walk. And pulling away right now is the water taxi to Magic Kingdom as well. Along with Disney's contemporary resort across the water, this hotel is one of the closest to Magic Kingdom. It is just this hotel in the contemporary that you can walk to Magic Kingdom. And of course you have absolutely amazing views of the fireworks. Some rooms even have views of the theme park, which is very cool. So you could watch fireworks from your room. Now I absolutely love the benefit of being able to just hop in a boat and explore the different hotels around this area as well as just cruise right on over to Magic Kingdom. That is so amazing. In general, just being able to walk so close to Magic Kingdom is so cool. I mean, look at that. Look how close we are. Now, if the boats or walking aren't for you, if that's not your speed, you can also take the monorail. There is a monorail station on the second floor of Grand Floridian and it is just one stop over to Magic Kingdom. Now, when you come back in the evening, it will be more than one stop, but in the morning, it's just one stop. That monorail is also going to be your ticket to Epcot. You hop on the monorail, head a few stops over to the transportation and ticket center and transfer to the Epcot monorail to head over to Epcot. So it's a huge amenity to be in an Epcot resort it's because you have pretty easy access to two parks. Now for Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, as well as Disney Springs and any other destinations within Disney World that you want to go to, you will be taking a bus. There's a bus station out in front of the hotel that will get you where you want to go. These bus rides are pretty short between eight and 20 minutes, 12 and 20 minutes, depending on traffic. So it, they really don't take long. It's very conveniently located, so it's easy to get around Disney World, as you would want with prices this expensive. Now let's talk recreation. All Disney hotels have recreation options, but the deluxe have a lot of different recreation options. Right now, I am walking up on Courtyard Pool. This is actually the original pool and it is the larger of the two, but it is not the more hop-in. It is a generally a more relaxed pool for just kind of resting and, you know, taking a nice poolside vacation. It's 
pretty nice. Um, but your kiddos, I think, might be drawn more to the beaches pool. Before we head over to see that themed pool, though, let's get a little bit of a better look at the courtyard pool, which also has its very own pool bar with courtyard bar where you can get pool drinks. We are coming up on Beaches Pool now. Now this is a curiouser and curiouser Alice in Wonderland themed splash area, which looks amazing. And in the background, you can see Beaches Pool. The main event at Beaches Pool is the fact that it is themed. It's got this cool rock waterfall and a water slide, and the maximum depth is just four feet. So this is the perfect spot for your kiddos to come play. The hotel also has some nice white sand beaches you can lounge on with some beach games like giant chess. And you can see kind of on the edge of the water over there, Disney's wedding pavilion. This is a pavilion made for Disney's fairy tale wedding, and it is on a private island right off of Disney's Grand Florida Inn Resort. It has a near perfect view of Cinderella Castle and can hold up to 250 guests. I don't know that weddings are an activity, but if you want to get married in Disney World, the wedding pavilion is an option, albeit an expensive one. Campfire activities are something you'll find at a lot of Disney hotels. Weather permitting, they often happen nightly. And this hotel offers movies under the stars, just like every other Disney hotel, where you can watch a Disney movie on the lawn at night. Now, because this hotel is situated on Seven Seas Lagoon, you also have access to a marina where you can do boat rentals, as well as fishing excursions, and even fireworks cruises. This is also home to the only open spa in Disney World with Sensa Spa. It is an amazing experience. I did actually get to go. Maybe you can see me go to Sensa Spa in my full tour of Grand Floridian. Hard to say though, because I was apparently so relaxed that I don't know what I was doing. You also have access to a fitness center as well as some sport courts. Now we are out here. This pool does have a pool bar with its own beaches pool bar and grill where you can find some light eats as well as your pool drinks. It's also important to note that Grand Floridian is often home to events as well as conventions. There is a convention center here. So if you are at Grand Floridian while one of these things are going on, which of course you can't predict, you might see some areas closed off or some larger crowds if it's a bigger convention. This resort also has some of the most famous holiday offerings in Disney World, so it often remains pretty crowded during the holiday season. So right now it is the holidays and it's pretty busy here. And I know a lot of people are just day guests swinging by to see the giant multi-story gingerbread house as well as the beautiful tree in the lobby. Now we've seen the pool bars, but some of the best food not only in Disney World but in all of Florida can also be found at this hotel. I've made it to the second floor of the lobby to show off one of my favorite dining locations in Disney World. But before I do that, just want to take a look at the Christmas revelry happening downstairs. Look at that actual gingerbread house. For real. It's made of real gingerbread. It smells amazing in here. Also, you'll notice some more unique shopping options at Grand Floridian, some higher end items, as well as Basin, which is a sort of bath care store. You can see all of these in detail in my full tour of Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. This is Enchanted Rose Lounge. It is a subtly Beauty and the Beast themed lounge that has absolutely spectacular drinks, as well as some delicious eats too. It is one of our favorite lounges in Disney World and for sure one of the places that we most regularly find ourselves stopping for fun. So uh, if you're ever looking for us, especially when we have friends from out of towns here, we might be at Enchanted Rose. I have truly never had a bad drink there. I highly recommend it, but just be warned it's a little pricey. If you want to see Enchanted Rose, you can check it out in any of our monorail crawl videos. It's usually our stop at Grand Floridian. Now we've got a couple of fancier restaurants to check out. The doors are closed because they're not currently open. It's a day of the week, but usually down this hallway is where you'll find Citrico's and Victoria and Albert's. Citrico's is a moderately nice restaurant that has a subtle Mary Poppins theme. You will still find reasonable prices here, and I've heard the food is absolutely amazing, but it's actually on my very small list of places that I've never been. The menu there is going to be Floridian cuisine with a Mediterranean influence. This is also where you'll find Victoria and Albert's, which is the dining centerpiece of Disney's Grand Floridian. This is an ultra elegant restaurant with a menu that changes all the time and has a rather fancy dress code as well. It has won AAA's illustrious Five Diamond Award, has been the Forbes Travel Guide Five Star Award, and has glowing Zagat reviews and a host of other accolades. Now, this is an incredibly fancy restaurant, but very much a fine dining experience. If you would like to learn more about Victorian Alberts, you can check out our full review of Victorian Alberts on the channel. Breed Love and I both went, so we experienced it as a plant-based eater and a meat eater, and it was definitely an experience. Kind of unlike anything else I've ever done. So if you want to learn more about Victorian Alberts, you can check that out. But keep in mind, this is a multi-hundred dollar meal. I think Breed Love and I's final tab would have come to over a thousand dollars. The other nicer restaurant at this hotel is Narcoozies, which is a signature restaurant featuring seafood with steak and chicken entrees. 
Now I'm back down on the first floor as we make our way to the other dining options. Tons of dining at this hotel. And it's all pretty darn tasty. I don't think there's a single restaurant at this hotel that I dislike. In this area, we have Grand Floridian Cafe, which is one of my favorite spots because it is reasonably priced and still really, really tasty. They serve breakfast and lunch as well as dinner. They used to call their breakfast menu Blunch. It was wild. But their uh, breakfast and lunch options are really amazing. I've never had dinner here, but I've heard really good things. It's just kind of like a classic airy, lots of light Victorian cafe that has a really tasty menu. Interestingly enough, Grand Floridian is also home to one of the few restaurants that did not reopen after the 2020 park closures with 1900 Park Fair. This used to be a character meal that featured some rare characters like Alice and like Cinderella and stepsisters and Prince Charming, but that one has not reopened. Now you'll see some construction barriers. This hotel has been in the midst of a refurb for a while, so they're working on just some freshening up and making sure it's a beautiful resort for years to come. But that does mean there can be some construction noise during the daytime. There are often construction projects at the hotel and no matter what hotel you're staying at, I highly recommend checking their page on the Disney website before you book to make sure that there's not going to be anything that will be a make or break for you, like a pool closure or something like that. Now, as we go to check out the rest of the food, I'm just gonna swing by this map to show you a little bit of the layout. So this is the hotel. Um, it's pretty large, as you can see. We've got the main building right here with a number of outer rooms over here. Here are your pools that we've seen and you've got the villas over here. So pretty large, Magic Kingdom is that way. Uh, the Polynesian is this way. So you can actually walk to the Polynesian, although that path has been on and off closed with the construction of the Polynesian's new Disney Vacation Club Tower. We've seen a lot of fancy dining, but let's talk about something a little more accessible. Gasparilla Island Grill is the quick service at this hotel. It is open pretty early and pretty late, and it has some awesome options. In particular, the Gasparilla Island Grill Mac and Cheese is my favorite mac and cheese in all of Disney World. It is so good. When I stayed here to make my hotel tour video, I ate that mac and cheese I think like four times in a one night stay. It was embarrassing and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Another great thing about being right on the water is that you can see the electrical water pageant. This is a nightly water parade that floats by the hotels in this area on Seven Seas Lagoon. It is really beautiful and nostalgic and just something I absolutely love. And with that, you've seen pretty much everything you need to know about Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. So that means it's time to decide if you should get booking or keep looking. You should get booking if this hotel is a bucket list for you. Grand Floridian is the peak of Disney hotels. I'm sorry, look at that sunset. That's gorgeous. It's the peak of Disney hotels and for a lot of folks, it is that bucket list stay. If you don't mind the splurge, that's the caveat for all of these get bookings. You should also get booking if you really want great proximity to Magic Kingdom, as well as views of the fireworks and the electrical water pageant. This is a great spot for all of those things. You should also get booking if you're looking to do some fine dining. This is the best hotel to do some fine dining at. So especially if you wanna try out a few fancier spots, a stay at Grand Floridian could be right for you. Again, if you don't mind that splurge. Now you should keep looking if you aren't looking to splurge. There is not a cheap way to stay at this hotel. Even if you rent Disney Vacation Club points, even if you book on a special offer, anything you do, it's still gonna be more expensive than most other options in Disney World. So that's just the sad reality of it. This is Disney luxury. And to stay here, it's gonna cost you a bit. You should also keep looking if you don't plan to spend a ton of time at your hotel. Grand Floridian is amazing. It is absolutely wonderful. But if you plan to spend morning to night in the parks and just need a place to lay your head, maybe check out a value or moderate to get a really nice room Room without just paying so much money just so much money it's so expensive I also think it's important to note that a lot of the things that I've talked about today outside of the rooms are available without staying here too you don't have to stay at Grand Floridian to try out the food or see the holiday offerings um, a lot of the recreation maybe is just for Grand Floridian guests but it's just the kind of thing where you can hop on the monorail for Magic Kingdom, experience a lot that this hotel has to offer without paying so, 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 so much. Definitely more a hotel if you can afford to splurge or if you just have a special occasion or it's a major bucket list option. 
But don't worry, if you do decide to keep looking, you can check out my full ranking of every single hotel in Disney World. I have personally stayed in every single Disney World hotel, so I've ranked all of them from value to deluxe so that you can see what might be right for you. That video is up on the channel now, and if you wanna learn more about any of the hotels, you can check out my full tour of any Disney World hotel. I have toured every single one for videos on the channel, and you can check those out too. I hope this video has helped you decide if a stay at Grand Floridian is right for you. If you liked it, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch my full tour of Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. I'll see you there.